What's up, comrades? It's me, Nightwolf, and we're back for a brand new video. Today, I decided to do kind of a first impressions video. It's been a while since I've done any type of video, and I kind of wanted to keep you guys updated what's been going on. I've been playing my very first Super Robot Wars game. In particular, I've been playing Super Robot Wars V. Uh, for those of you who do not know, follow me on Twitter. That's where I've kind of posted some of the updates of what's been happening. I can't post pictures anymore from my PS4 for whatever reason. It's really weird. But um, I've been having a lot of fun playing the game. I've been playing it now for quite a, off and on for several weeks. I'm not super far into the game. I'm only at about probably scenario 13, I believe was what I was at. I'm at the, uh, we're working with the characters from Full Metal Panic and also running into the characters from Crossange. So, I kind of wanted to just overall give my kind of general impressions of these this game, aside from just doing it on Twitter, because that doesn't, that only allows for so many characters, doesn't it? So, I kind of wanted to talk a bit about it, just kind of ramble and... Hope you will. Hopefully, you guys will indulge me and let me uh, talk about the game because it's a lot of fun. I've never played any of the Super Robot War games prior to this one, to my knowledge. I don't think I've ever touched them. I only learned about them over the more recent years, what with a lot of the people who I know in the community and whatnot, who you know talk about Super Robot Wars or show reaction trailers to that. And I'm like, oh, that those games look like they'd be a lot of fun. Now, first things first, um, I picked up the PS4 version of Super Robot Wars V. Um, I was kind of hoping to get T because I just liked the series that were available on that a bit more. But for whatever reason, I just can't quite find a copy of it. This copy of Super Robot Wars V I got for pretty cheap, a used copy. So I was like... Let's start with V, which was like my second choice. My main reason why I wanted T was because I wanted to have the uh, uh, I wanted to have Captain Harlock. I've not really watched that show before. I haven't watched Captain Harlock, but I love his design. I, I've watched some of the stuff around it, or I've read some of the books, but I've never fully watched the series. But um, V was my second choice because it has the Yamato, which is also famous and well-loved uh, for uh, mecha and sci-fi buffs like myself. I've known about the Yamato for years. Also, another series I've never really watched, but I should probably get on that at some point. But, you know, that that's the great thing about anime or just certain forms of entertainment. There's just so much out there that sometimes you just don't have enough time in the day or in general in your lifetime to watch or view everything, so... Uh, back to so it's a little weird, you know. It it can, it can be a bit daunting to check out everything, but overall, I want to talk about the game's mechanics. So far, while checking out the game's mechanics, it's the tutorial doesn't cover doesn't. I don't feel it covers everything. Uh, a lot of times, there's a lot of menus and whatnot, which is very reminiscent of things like uh, Fire Emblem or well, as a similar comparison, SD Gundam, uh, the Cross Rays and G Generate and Genesis. There's a lot of menus, a lot of things to learn. There's several forms of current. There's at least two different types of currency that you have to acquire, which I'm still kind of learning and understanding how that works. It's so far, been a process. I, I I'm not going to be a master of it or anything, but. It is interesting. I guess I could kind of talk about the games uh, overall. Well, I'm, we're on mechanics. Let's go about actual gameplay itself. I actually really love this the way this game is laid out and how it plays. A lot better than the SD Gundam games. Now, the SD Gundam games are cool. They have really cool animations, especially the last two have been really cool animation-wise. And if you're a fan of Gundam and you like to recap story bits or or kind of 
just in general, but mostly the SD Gundam games feel more like a collectathon, more so than an actual um, story. There are stories in the game, but they're all based on the scenarios of whatever shows are present. So you don't really get a whole opportunity to have your own unique story, especially considering that there's a, t there's that whole roster of actual original characters that are in the games. But from what I can tell from both Crossrays and Genesis, they don't really do anything. They don't have their own. S they might have their own stories and whatnot that I that are written down. But basically the game feels a lot more like a simulator, more so than an actual um, story-driven experience. But Super Robot Wars is very different. That one does have a story, and the story has been really, really good. I've been heavily enjoying it. The ways that they find out how to cross uh, different genres and different stories and try and find ways to merge all these different worlds is continuity together either through alternate dimensions and alternate timelines or they may just do it via you know saying like oh they've all been together for quite a number they've always been together like um the characters from martian successor nadesco uh mighty gain celestial being they're all in the same world which i find kind of funny but also is a good way of explaining how all these worlds can interconnect. Just trying to find ways to keep them all together. Uh, especially like having the Yamato connected to the UC timeline, which kind of makes sense considering the age of Yamato. I'm like, okay, yeah, I could kind of see that potentially working. They aren't that much different, uh, you know, technology-wise and whatnot. The Yamato looks old, so putting it in the... You see timeline uh, roughly about the same time as Crossbone. It works. It tends to work out quite well. Um, I definitely do also enjoy the character interactions. Um, uh, even the original characters that are in the game are quite fun. And I've been having a lot of fun kind of learning more about Chitose and... What is his name? Soji. And the it's a lot of fun. I chose to play as Chitose. Because uh, I think she's cute. So, there's that. But, overall, it's been just an overall good story. Very engaged in the story. And even though some of it does not make a whole lot of sense, it's still a lot of fun. Um, it's a crossover style game that I think works really well. And I kind of want to play a lot of the older ones now that I've played this one. There are some that, like there are certain series that are not he in these ga these more recent games that I would love to see. Like I want to see Macross, but they aren't in these games. Or there might be other series that I'm not that I don't remember that are not in these particular games. But yeah, considering that the combat is, you know, a tile based combat. I don't know. I'm I'm bouncing all over the place. I'm not scheduled. I have I just kind of just quickly hopped on. I'm like, I need to record something. So I'm going to record something. Just random thought to do so. Um, I genuinely like that the game... Um, the game's grid-based combat is actually pretty effective. Especially considering with the SD Gundam games... I, I'm, I know I'm making a lot of comparisons, but... The SD Gundam games follow similar principles where it's grid-based combat. Or grim grid-based strategy combat but the problem is is that those ones have an enormous amount of enemies and that is very annoying uh so far in the super robot wars game most of the maps can get be finished within an hour or so and that's you know especially if you know what you're doing or if you've kind of gotten the handle on the gameplay uh, in Crossrace, some maps can take over two hours, and in my personal opinion, that's too much. Um, especially, But considering that those games, like I said, aren't overly story-based, I guess it's not the worst thing, but I do find it to be a bit of an issue with those games. I love playing them because I love Gundam, but at the same time, I think that they could do with a bit of tweaking and improvement when it comes to encounter rates and how many enemies are on the maps. 
because, oh boy, there is uh, <laughs> way too many sometimes. And, yeah, because, like, in comparison, some of the maps in Super Roll Wars has a fair amount of enemies to beat up, but there aren't so many that it takes the map five times longer to finish. So, I appreciate that. That, coupled with a better story, or with an actual story, with fun gameplay mechanics, great animations, by the way. I, I, I should mention animations, and for a very good reason, because um, the animations, I actually ended up, li I ended up liking the animations of Super Robot Wars more than the last two SD Gundam games. That's not to say that the animations in SD Gundam are bad. They aren't. They're fantastic. But... I'm a sucker for things that look like the they're ripped straight from the anime itself. And that's exactly what a lot of the attacks look like. They look like they were ripped straight out of the anime. When you see some of them, it's like, yep, that definitely looks like it came straight from the anime. Like, if uh, Getter Black does a Getter Beam, or, you know, or Mazinger does Breast Fire, or any of those attacks, and it's like, yep. This looks like it came straight from the anime, and I appreciate that. I, I remember I haven't gotten to the point where Amuro in the new Gundam is around, but I saw the animations for, like, the Fin Funnel attack, and it looks like just like it was back in when that movie first came out, which was in the late 80s, I believe. So that's really impressive, and that's a great attention to detail. Yeah, I think for the last bit of this video, I want to kind of go over, like, some of my favorite mechs and stuff that I would like to continue using as the game progresses because eventually you get to the point where you have so many robots that you can't use them all. I'm just going to kind of list off some of my favorites so far because I've gotten quite a few so far. Um, ship wise, I love the Yamato. Uh, I was actually genuinely surprised when I did the map that starts uh, Cross Ange. Uh, I, and I run into the Full Metal Panic crew, which is one of my favorite animes of all time. And the sub is there. And I'm like... <laughs> Tessa and the sub are there. And I'm actually a bit surprised they're here because I don't know how many maps are going to require a sub. Uh, and I'm assuming not very many. But the sub was cool for whatever novelty or for however long that lasts. But, um... Let's see, yeah, but, I mean, the Ptolemaeus number two from the Awakening of the Trailblazer movie from Gundam 00 is there. I always liked the Ptolemaeus, but doesn't have a whole lot of attack options right now, so it's kind of limited in what it can do. Me, personally, I prefer the Yamato. Um, there's also the Nadesco B. It's fine, but like I said, Yamato all the way. For, sh for ship, it's the Yamato. It just looks so cool, and I love its animations for all of its attacks, pretty much. So, yeah, Yamato. Um, as for, let's see, um, the super robots that I'm liking so far. Like, so far, one of my favorite robots that I recently got was Mighty Gain. And Miyato, I absolutely love that thing. It reminds me of a Megazord so much. But it's so cool. Its animations are fantastic. It made me want to go and actually watch that show. Although I haven't watched very much, but I watched the first episode. Which was pretty cool. Um, uh, Blackgetter and Mazinger are okay. Um, I, I don't know if I want to keep them around. I, we'll see. Actually, right now, they're not even with me, so there's that. Uh, it was cool to see the Arbalist, which is probably one of my favorite mechs that are not Gundams ever. I love the Arbalist from Full Metal Panic. It's awesome. So far, for the Gundams that are in the game, I personally like Crossbone Gundam. It's cool to have Toby and the Crossbone uh, and uh, Kincaid with a mass production version of the F-91. I just love the F-91 and Crossbone Gundam. They're both awesome. Um, let's see. 
The only other Gundams that have shown up currently are the ones from Awakening of the Trailblazer. Oh, wait, no, and the XE's Gundam is now here, so Hathaway is here, which was kind of cool. Uh, haven't really gotten to see very many of its attack animations, so I can't say I love it yet. Um, but out of the four uh, double O suits, I've always kind of liked the Quanta and the Zabanya. Those two are pretty cool. I don't know if I care for the other two. Harut and um, Raphael are fine, but they're just not my favorites. I just don't like their designs as much. But pretty much I think that's about all I can think of right now off the top of my head that I wanted to talk about with Super Robot Wars V. I'm enjoying the game. I want to finish it, and I'll probably do a review of it sometime in the near future once I finish the game. Right now, that game is my priority to finish. So once it's finished, I will try and... Do a review, full, well, may, just basically a full overview of what my experience was and how much fun I had. So, look forward to that when that comes around. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That covers everything that I wanted to talk about. I've run out of things to say. So, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, of course, you can leave me a like, you can shoot me a comment, you can subscribe. All those things are greatly appreciated, you know... Hit the notification button, follow me on Twitter, all those good things. You know, links are in the descriptions, as always, so feel free to, you know, click away, please. I, I, it always helps, and I do appreciate it. And of course, as always, do not forget to raise your nerd flags high, and I will see you next time. I will fizz out.